Okay. Roll the four lines from the bottom. I am Newman Oliver. The Mishnah says that one of the classifications of the of the illegitimacy was Kusi. Kusi. Kusim originally they were converts. And the question is when they converted, was the converted considered a valid conversion or was not a valid conversion? But even if there's a question, it's a machlokis in throughout Shas and Subis and Yubomis, if Kusim gave a royos or gave a yemis. Initially, when they converted, was it an authentic conversion? Well, they converted because of the lions, because they were attacked by lions, it wasn't really a valid conversion. But Mars is a Hulin, even if you were of the opinion, they were gave a emis, ultimately they found among them, they found um, a dove, a gold dove, which was the, which was the original deity that they worshipped, so they reverted back to original idolatry. So they're considered Jews, Jews who became pagans. But the difference is, if you hold, they were never Jewish, they were never Jews. So the whole concept of mamzer has no relevance. Right? You can't have a legitimacy among a non-Jew. So if there's ever a question, what do you do? You convert him. Is he a Jew, not a Jew? That was the whole story with the, you know, with the uh, Ethiopians, the Colossians. If they weren't Jewish, even if they didn't observe the laws of Kedushan and Gittin properly, they were never Jewish. So there's not a concern that maybe they're Mamzerim. So they come to Israel, you convert them. If they do a valid conversion, they're the Jews. But if they, they claim that originally they were Jews, and because they were ignorant of the halacha and they didn't have proper marriages and divorce, that, that, that's a serious problem. Now you have a question of Mamzerus, their mm. illegitimacy, you're not permitted to marry them. So you bring in a certain element Territ is row, which creates a problem. Okay? But Moshe held, I mentioned. He held they were never Jews. They were never Jews. Never Jews. No, not a, whatever it is. It's political. They said they should convert. They said they should convert again, just to make sure. Okay, let, let's get back to the Gemara. Just want to bring up the Kusi. So then, no, so no, so as a result of that, that gave them the, the, the illegitimate status. Because now that they, they went back to idolatry, now they, they, they're not careful, they're not behaving as Jews any longer. And if they're not behaving as Jews any longer, now we, we have to be concerned about illegitimacy. Mamzerus. No, 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 no. There's one position in, in the Bishon, not in the Gemara. Not in the Gemara. Okay? So Rebeleza says, Kusi lo yitzha kusis. According to Sefta. Reb Loza says, a kusi, he says, a mamzer, a sopik cannot marry a, a sopik. Yet, so Reb Loza says in Sefto, a kusi cannot marry, a male kusi cannot marry a kusis, a female kusis. My time, the question is, why not? Om Reb Yosef, osu kiger lachas Yeah. They gave the person a status of a ger after ten generations. What's after ten generations? The Mark tells us, we find by Yisro, it says by Yichad Yisro. After Moshe shared with him all that Hashem had done to Paro Mitzrayim, it says Vayichad. What's Vayichad? The Gemara says, Rashi cites the Gemara, it means Vayismach. So, so what is that, Vayismach? Nasib Sur Chadudim Chadudim. The Gemara is Sanhedrin. Actually, his, his flesh was prickled. Meaning, by hearing, he was happy, but simultaneously he was pained. Hearing that his fellow Gentiles were destroyed, so from here the Gemara says that you shouldn't see anything negative about a non-Jew in the presence of a Jew if he converted until ten generations have passed. Because there's always that there's always that connection that he feels to his to his origin as a non Jew, his non Jewish origin. So it says that after generations, Asu Kiger Lacha Saradoras, after ten generations, the person he he doesn't like he has no semblance of a non Jew any longer. Let's say he would marry a Mamzer. A Ger is permitted to marry a Mamzer. But let's say he would marry a Mamzer, and there's no recollection that, he's, that he originally was a, a convert. What happens? So what are people going to say? That a, a legitimate Jew is permitted to marry a convert. Because they're not wa aware any longer that, that a Mamzer, they, they're not aware any longer that he was a convert. So they gave the Kusi this status. The status of a Ger after ten generations, where it's forgotten that he originally he was what? That he, was a, that he was a convert. 
The Tanya Ger out of Soradoros Mutab Mazeros. Ad means Ad Ad Bechlal. Through ten generations, he's permitted. Mikan Vei Lechosim Ben Mazeros. After ten generations, he's no longer permitted from Mazeros. Good. Let's say you had both. The Ger marries a, a regular Jewish woman. The child's not a Ger any longer. Talk about the husband and wife of Yerim, ten generations. They married among themselves, converts. So what is the status of the child after ten years? They're still Gerim. They're not Kal Hashem. How did they become Kal Hashem? Why is it Ger permitted to marry a Mamzer? The other Mamzer Kal Hashem, Ger. So how did he become Kal Hashem? He's still a Ger. How did he become Kal Hashem? Everybody was. After ten generations, but it is rabbinical. It's a rabbinical fence because we all, once it's forgotten that he, he's, his origin is, is a convert, people are going to say that a, a kosher Jew is permitted to marry a mamzer. He's a gay. Yeah, he's permitted to marry a mamzer. Yes. Why not? How, how does he become kal Hashem? That's something else. No, no, that's something because the pedigree. Two, the father and mother are both gay. Even though he didn't convert. But it depends. Where he's no longer referred to as an idolater. I mean, he's seen as one of the group. says, Here we know she's a kusi, he's a kusi, she's a kusi. So we're calling him kusi, marrying kusi. So it's not, they've been in the system so long, they're no longer identifiable as that. So if that's the case, why should we permit it? As we know, he's a kusi, she's a kusis. Mi domi. Hosam ger yoshon. Umamzeres chadosha. That that we say that a ger, after ten generations, is not permitted to marry a mamzeres, it's a ger that's been, the family's been Jewish for generations. And here you have a woman, a newly arrived, an illegitimacy which just came about, recent. So if that's the case, we're concerned. It appears as if a kosher Jew is marrying a mamzeres. Amri bar Yisrael who the konos the konos of mamzeres. So what are people going to say? A Jew is marrying a mamzeres, which is which is a problem. Hochi idi bidi ki adodi ninu. Here we have two people saying a kusis. He's recognized as a kusi. She's recognized as a kusis. They're not permitted permitted to marry. That's a rebellion. Why not? What's the reason? He, she, and he they have the same illegitimacy. That neither are, are kal Hashem. Whatever you say, Suffolk Mamzer marrying a Suffolk Mamzer, or you want to say uh, he's that, whatever, Giri Aroy, they're both Goyim, whatever you want to call them, Giri Aroyos, Giri Emes, whatever they are, they have the same classification. So why can't the male mar marry the female? Eloki, Osir Rabdimi, Omer Rebelezer. Rabdimi came back, he said of the name of Rebelezer, Sovalak Rabbi Shemuel, Omar. Reb Loza Sovel Kerib Yishmoel. Reb Loza concurs with Reb Yishmoel. Who's Reb Yishmoel? Reb Yishmoel. Reb Yishmoel Sovel Kerib Kiva. He po... No, no, this is a Tano. They're all Tano. We're quoting Tosefta. Reb Loza... No, this Reb Loza is like Reb Tosefta, the Kedusha. Reb Loza, this is not... This is not Reb Loza Gamo. It's Reb Loza Tano. No, this is a Tano. Tano. He says, Kusi is not permitted to marry him. Is not permitted to marry a kusis. So we say he concurs, he follows the position of Rabbi Shmuel, and Rabbi Shmuel follows the position of Rabbi Akiva. Okay? First of all, who's Rabbi Shmuel? Rabbi Akiva is known. Rabbi Akiva holds, is of the opinion that you could have a mamzer from a chayvi lavim. Right? Any chayvi lavim is what is, is mamzer. But what's Rabbi Shmuel? Okay? Rabbi Shmuel, Savel Rabbi Akiva, Rabbi Lot, Savel Rabbi Shmuel. What does it mean? Rabbi Lozer follows the position of Rabbi Shmuel. Domar Kusim Geri Aroyu saying that Kusim, the original conversion is not a, was not a valid conversion because they converted because of the lions. Geri Aroyus. So therefore, so what is actually Kusim? So going, we're talking about a non-Jew. Geri Aroyus. Rabbi Shmuel Savodo Rabbi Akiva. Listen, and Rabbi Shmuel follows the position of Rabbi Akiva. So if that's the case, they're both going. If they both considered kusim, she and he, they're non-Jews, but that's not that's not the issue. And Rabbi Shmuel holds like Rabbi Akiva. 
Domer Uli Kochovim Dever Abo Bas Yisrael Havlad Mamzer. That if a non Jew fathers a child from a Jewish woman or an Evid, a Canaanite slave, the child's a Mamzer. We don't rule like Rabbi Akiva. But if you say Rabbi Shmuel rules like Rabbi Akiva, so we're talking about Mamzer. Okay? So the old Geri Arroyos, that means the Kusi is not Jewish. So if the, if he, but originally they recognized as Gerim, he married a regular Jewish woman. What's the child? The child's a Mamzer, according to Rabbi Akiva. Correct? No, today, today, today. No, we're going into history. The history, originally. When they originally converted, the conversion was out of fear because of the lions. They were attacked by lions. Well, they're not Jews. But no, but they recognized, originally they were accepted as Jews, so they married Jewish, Jewish women. So what was the child of that union? It's a mamzer. Okay? So good. So now, if a person, as I said, if they would have, you're of the, of the opinion they're kosher Jews, they're kosher, or they're not Jewish at all, and akum blabashirelevlat kosher, so then there's no problem. Right? It's not a problem. If they married among themselves, it's not a problem. The, cho the children are, so you know what you do? Worst to worst, one they should convert. And then they're kosher. It's kosher with kosher. But if there's a chance they may be a mamzer, it's not going to help you. Right? One may be a mamzer, one may not be a mamzer. We, we don't know exactly what the combination is. So therefore, it is a problem here. We'll see. The Omar Ovid Kochom, the Ebra Blah Blah Shisra, Allah Blah Mamzer. So therefore, it's a problem. Let's take a look at Rashi. Tosis has, a, Tosis has a problem with Rashi. Now, why is Akum the Ebra Baba Shisra Vlad Mamzer? Why is that? So you say, so Rashi learns that because it's Chayvi Lav. So Lav is a Lav Losis A non Jew is not permitted to marry a Jew. It's Losis Chatin. So Tosis before, and Tosis is consistent with his position. Los Hashatim firmly only applies to the seven nations of Canaan after they converted. As a goy, there's no lava Los Hashatim. So Tosis is a problem with Rashi. So why is it a mamzer? There's no marriage. There's no marriage, but there's no lava. The lava of Los Hashatim. Rakiva says to Wachas that Chayvei Lavim produces a mamzer. So Tosis says, but there's no Chayvei Lavim. The lava Los Hashatim only applies to the seven nations of Canaan. After they convert, after they convert to be Jewish, they're not permitted to marry a kosher Jew because Torah says los You're not permitted to marry of the seven nations of Canaan. But they're not Jews. They're not Jew. They're Jews. Right. Not right. non-Jew. Non what, what, what's that so we'll talk about that. What, what, why that's not permitted? But it's not because it's chayvei lavin. No. It's not chayvei lavin. It's it's a separate. Because it produces mamzer, but why does it produce mamzer? Torah says it produces mamzer. Because anything where you cannot have marriage is mamzer. It's like chayvei krisus, chayvei krisus bezin, right? If, if something has the liability of the death penalty or kores, you cannot marry that woman, correct? So therefore, as a, that's Reb Kiva's position. So we, we argue. We said no. There has to be there has to be chayvei krisus or mises bezin, otherwise it doesn't produce mamzer. Reb Kiva said thing you know that mamzer and not being marriageable, they're one and the same. They're synonymous. So even if you have a love and they are marriageable, meaning they're subject to marriage elsewhere, the child's a mamzer. But what about if, under no circumstance, do they have any relevance to marriage, then the child's definitely a mamzer. So it's not because you're violating a love. That's tosis. That's tosis. Rashi says over here, so the curb kiva, do chayvi lavim him. What is the problem with a non Jew marrying a Jewish woman? Why does it produce a mamzer? It's Chayvei Lavin. So if it would be Eved, Eved, Eved is easy. Because Eved is what we just have in the Parsha. Lo si ekedesh, lo yekodesh. Right? It's like prostituting yourself. If you can't have marriage, that's, that's the love of lo yekodesh. Right? Lo Chayvei Lavin meim, hilko kusi, lo yiso kusis. Why? The Tavayu sveki mamzerim, heim, v'yesh loma t'kol echod mihem, uvom Yisraelis, hanisas lo v'tkochovim, umamzer v'zubom ikusi v'kusis, Okay, Tosis has other problems with Rashi. Because the question is, if one's a mamzer, the other one may be not Jewish. If they're both mamzerim, they should be permitted to marry. And if they're, one's not Jewish, right, 
be, both parents weren't Jewish, the mother wasn't Jewish, so they'll convert. So one of Shofi, they should be permitted. Right? That's, that's Tosa's question on Rashi, too. What exactly is the problem here? Kusi marrying Kusis. Even if it's a mamzer, what's the chance? If they're both mamzer, it's not a problem. The other chance is they're not Jewish. What's the problem? So convert. Convert one of them, then they could marry. No, we say. That's what we say. One of them's possible is a mamzer. Because Reb Kiva is of the opinion, Akuma Bob Yisrael, these original converts, they married a regular, had a relation with a regular Jewish woman married. So the child is a mamzer. So that's part of the Kusi family. So, so, so what's the other chance? So they're both mamzer. The answer is no. One, the mother may have what? Been an initial, original Kusis, which the conversion was never a conversion. So convert her, and by, as a result of conversion, what are you going to do? You'll have a convert marrying a mamzeris. So why is a Kusi not permitted to marry a Kusis? At worst, they're my, both mamzer. And if, not, if one's not Jewish, convert, convert them. Either the way Rashi, either mamzer or goy. Either mamzer or not Jewish. Right, that, that's the issue. Because Rabbi Shmuel holds like Rabbi Akiva, right? And that's the issue. They're, they're either mamzer, and, and, he, and Rabbi Shmuel himself is of the opinion, Gere Arroyos. Right? The Gere Arroyos. The original conversion was not a valid conversion. They're not, so therefore, when they marry a Jewish woman, if, if Rabbi, Rabbi Shmuel con concurs with Rabbi Akiva, the current to them, then it's mamzer. So we have a problem. So Tosa says, what's the problem? It's not a problem. If they're both mamzerim, they're permitted. And if one's maybe not Jewish, so convert one of them. So why, he says, under no circumstance could these two individuals marry. Let one undergo a conversion, and they could marry. So Tosa says, which is a little bit of dochik, that we look at what happened was you had also kosher Jews intermingling. That one of them may be a kosher Jew. That one may be a kosher Jew in there. So because so as a result of that, that you're not gonna, it's not going to help you any. Okay, let's go further. So the Gemara says, um, Rabbi Shmuel, Rabbi Akiva. So we're saying Rabbi Lozer holds like Rabbi Shmuel, or Rabbi Shmuel concurs with Rabbi Akiva. So Gemara says, does Rabbi Shmuel concur with Rabbi Akiva? I'm Rabbi Yochan, Shem Rabbi Shmuel. Minayin le'eved, lovit kochov, le'eved shmo, ala kahenes, v'ala levio. Here? Rabbi Yochan says, Rabbi Shmuel, how do we know that if a non-Jew or an Eved has relations with a Bas Kohen, Bas Kohen eats Shuma, correct? So what happens if she becomes defiled? She's not permitted to eat Shuma any longer. She says, how do we know if an Ovi Kochov, an Eved, who has relations with a Kohenes or Levio, while Bas Yisrael Shepot that they are considered defiled and not permitted to marry Kohanim, the Bas Kohen is not permitted to eat Shuma, but the Levio or the Bas Yisrael, they've been disqualified, they've been defiled, to not be permitted to marry a Kohen. Shinemar quotes a posuk, O bas Kohen ki si almona u grusha, vizer inlo. A bas Kohen who becomes a widow or a grusha or a divorcee, and she has no children. So what happens? She returns to her father's household. She's permitted to be chuma, continue to be chuma. So what does that mean? Nishesha almonos u gersha. So who is she married to? She was married to him. A, a, a man that she was widowed from that marriage, from that relation, or that relationship was terminated through Gershon. But a non Jew in Evid, she's you're not widowed, the woman's not widowed from a relationship, mm -hmm. from, from a, a status. Or she's you haven't terminated a status, it was never a status. No concept of widowhood. Or divorcee has no relevance if she's married to a non-Jew. There was never a relationship. Okay? There was never. So therefore, then we're not talking about that. So say, uh, when does the Basco in eat Truma? If she's widowed from a relationship where there was a relationship. Uh, that's why she's a widow. Or she's a divorcee. So she hasn't been defiled to become a zona. These so good so Rabbi Akiva, if we say Rabbi Shmuel concurs with Rabbi Akiva, that the child's a mamzer, hash the mamzer have a yisub yosim going. You have to cite me a pasuk. We're citing a pasuk why the woman is considered a vile woman, because she has no relevance to almanus and to, to be a grusha. But if you tell me Rabbi Shmuel concurs with Rabbi Akiva, that the child's a mamzer, even the consideration of the child, the woman's child's a mamzer, she's going to be permitted to a kohen. 
That's the ultimate of being defiled. If the child that she mothered was a mamzer, so what does Rabbi Shmuel have to cite a puzzle to tell me that she's defiled because she has no relevance to Almon or so Gerushin to be a Grusha? It's just because she, 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 the child she mothered was a mamzer. So evidently, what do we see from Rabbi Shmuel? The child's a kosher child. So since the child's a kosher child, maybe we would consider her not defiled. Therefore, he has to cite a posuk that the reason why she's not permitted is because she had the, the man she was involved with, with had no relevance to Almonos and Gerashim. That's the reason why she's defiled. It's clear from the statement that that he has to cite a posuk tells me clearly he doesn't concur Rebbe Kiva. He owes the child is kosher. He's not a mamzer. So getting back, so we're back to square one. So even if Rebbe Loza holds like Rebbe Shmuel, right, why are they not permitted to one another? Even the Geri Arroyos let them convert. El Rab Rebeloza Sova Kareb Yishmoel Dama Kusim Geri Arroyos. Rebeloza follows this Rebbe Shmuel that Geri Arroyos. The Sova the Kareb Kibbutz Dama Vid Kochomer Hobo Bas Yisrael Lablad Mamzer. Meaning like this, Rebbe Shmuel personally, he disagrees with Rebbe Akiva. He's of the opinion Akum Ve'Evamo Bas Yisrael Lablad Kosher. And therefore, he has to cite the Pasuk, why she's considered defiled. But Rebbe Lozer himself, he's a Tana. He holds, he's of the opinion, he follows Rebbe Shmuel, that it wasn't a valid conversion. Here are Royus, the original Kusim. But, Eber Akum Ba'a Basra Havalad Mamzer. He personally, I follow Rebbe Shmuel in one context, and I feel follow Rebbe Kiva in another context. So therefore, we want to originally say, rather than say Rebbe Shmuel fully follows, Rebbe Shmuel doesn't follow. But Rebbe Lozer, in one context he follows Rebbe Shmuel, in the other context he follows Rebbe Akiva. Some more asked, but that can be. Will we solve Rebbe Lozer for Rebbe Akiva? But proving now that Rebbe Lozer does not hold like Rebbe Akiva, now it's very interesting. That we hold Chaboka. If a man is married, let's say an uncle marries his niece. Okay? He married his father's daughter. And he had another wife besides his niece, and the wife. So what's that called? That's called the co-wife of his niece. Now he died, the, now the person married to his niece dies, dies childless, childless, and he has a brother. He has a surviving brother who's the father of the niece. So that's Vito, right? That's his daughter. So the co-wife of his daughter is called what? Soras Erva. She's the co-wife of the erva. We rule uh, like Beis Hillel, that Tzoras erva is erva. Although she's permitted, independent, let's say the uncle, the brother would have divorced the, the niece before he died. And then subsequently he would die. So then the wife definitely falls to evil. Because there's no connection between the original co-wife and the daughter. She's not the co-wife of an erva. But if when he dies, she, he was still married to, to, to his niece, so when he died, well, who was the co-wives? As many co-wives as he had, they're all Tzoros Erva. They're the co-wives of, and Tzoros Erva's Kerva. That's no Beis Hillel. No Yibum, she goes free. free. All, all the wives free, they have the accents, because they're linked to a woman who's not permitted in Yibum. All the wives are free to go. No, no Yibum, no Chalitza, nothing. They're free to marry, but nothing. Beis Shammai disagrees that the only one that does not fall to Yibum, of course, is the daughter. But the co-wives, they fall to evil. Now, what normally if a man marries the wife of his brother, let's say his brother was deceased and he had children, what is, what is that? What is the, what, what, what is the wife? She's Eishas Achshelom Moka Mitzvah. She's the wife of a, of a brother. There's no context of Mitzvah. It's Kores, so therefore the child's a Mamzer. Correct? It's a Mamzer. Okay? So now, According to Beis Shammai, that he says th that the mitzvah of Yibum applies to Tzoras Habas, to the co-wife of, of, a, of a sister, of a, do of a niece. That means the brother will perform Yibum with the co-wives. According to Beis Shammai. According to Beis Hill, what's the status of the children? The Mamzerim. According to Beis Hill, those children are Mamzerim. We rule like Beis Hillel. We rule like Beis Hillel, the children are Mamzerim. What? Torah, Mamzer. Torah. 
on Torah level, they're, they're really the mamzerim. Because Torah's erev is kerev. So therefore, just as, as, the sis, as the daughter, beside being a daughter, is Eishas Ach, the, the co-wives are all Eishas Ach. Eishas Ach Shlom Moka Mitzvah. Eishas Ach Shlom Moka Mitzvah is, is a kores. Kores is mamzer. It's all based on Pesukim. So according to Beisilo, and we rule like this, Beisilo will not marry from the community of Beishamai. They weren't permitted to marry. Because according to Beish, this is the morning of Omas, because according to Beisilo, the community of Beishamai, they're rife with, with Mamzerim. Because all the cases of Tzoras, Ervo, which Beisilo said have the same status as the Ervo, Beishamai said you're obligated to perform Yibu. So they're all Mamzerim. So Beishamai will not marry from the, but it says, but Beishamai, did marry from the community of Beis Hillel. Now let's... No wait, wait. There's no Chalitza. What's the halacha? A woman falls to Yibam, and she, the Yibam does apply, and she marries another man, a third party. The, the Torah says, we just had in the Kisitze, the deceased, the wife of the deceased, should not be Izor, a Lizor, to marry another man. Until she gets the release of Chalitza, She's not put into love. Okay? So according to Beisilel, according to Beishamai, Beisilel's position on Tzoras Erva, permitted. There's no connection, she marries. But according to Beishamai, what did the Tzoras Erva do when she remarried? And let's see, she, she violated a love. Right? It's a love without Kori. Just a love. No liability to Kori. Wait a second. So if you're of the opinion that if you follow Rebbe Kiva, that from a love you have a, you have a mamzer, right? So then, Beishamai yeah. couldn't marry from the community of Beishil either. Beishil couldn't marry from the community of Beishamai because the Tzoros, that's a child of a Kores. And Beishamai couldn't marry from the, family, from the community of Beishil because all these so-called co-wives who remarried without Chalitza, they violated a love. Yeah, oh, that's only filled with Rebbe Akiva. So we're saying that right now, we're saying that Rebbe Lozad follows Rebbe Akiva. But Rebbe Lozad made a statement in Yavomis that Beishamai did marry of the community of Beishamai. Of a Beishilu. That means he did not, does not hold like Rebbe Akiva. Because otherwise he, they wouldn't be permitted to marry either because they're Mamzerim. So that clearly says that, Re, that Rebbe Lozad rejects Rebbe Akiva's position that a Mamzer is from a Chai Lavi. Okay, that's the Gemara. The Gemara says, Umisovala Rebbe Lozad, Rebbe Akiva. Do you mean to say Rebbe Lozer follows the position of Rebbe Akiva? Bom Rebbe Lozer, Api Shnech Lubisham Beisila Bitsoros. Although they argue regarding the co-wives of the what of the daughter, right? Modim Shein Mams Elamishi Suri Seerva Bonus Kores. But the Rebbe Lozer says that's only where do you have the Mamzer? That's only from a relationship which ha it's either Kores or what or, or Mrs. Bezdin. It's only a love, meaning Beishamai marrying the community of Beishelah would not be a problem. They're all legitimate Jews. So we're back to square one. So why does Rebbe Lozer say that a Kusi cannot marry a Kusis? Rebbe came back, said name Rebbe name Rebbe Yochanan, Amri Lo, Omer Rebbe Abba Brazavdo, Omer Rebbe Yochanino, there's a three-way argument here. Rabbi Shmuel Sovar Kusim Gerai Royos. We said earlier, Rabbi Shmuel is of the opinion that the, the Kusim originally converted was out of fear of the lions. That means it wasn't a valid conversion. And what happened? The Kohanim Shinit Mubehem Kom Sulem Hoyu. <coughs> and the Kohanim who initially intermarried with them were not legitimate Kohanim, Shinemar. Vayashlem Miktsosom Kohanim Bomos. Now, the Kusim, as we said, originally they, became, they went reverted back, even though originally the conversion was not a valid conversion. But they initially they conducted themselves as if they were Jews. But eventually they behaved like, like pagans, like idolaters. So they built uh, altars outside the Beis Amigdash. They had sacrifices. They enlisted Kohanim, Jews, to officiate on their behalf as Kohanim. But they were Kohanim Pesulim. 
As it says, V'yashu lohem miktsosav kwani bomos. Boma is is a mizbeach alpha and he's a midrash. We'll see. No, 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 no. Legitimate, he says. The legitimacy. V'omer abar b'chonom reb yochron min ha-kotsim shebom. It was from the thorns, Rashi says. Okay. That's the reason why we disqualify them. The Kusi. They intermingled. They intermingled with them. It's not clear over here. We'll see. Rabbi Akiva saw the Kusim Geri Emes. Rabbi Akiva's of the opinion was before we wanted to say he held Kusim Geri Aroy. The Geri Emes. They considered legitimate Jews originally. And then they reverted back to idolatry. Everybody agrees they reverted back to idolatry. The Kwanim Shinit Mohem, Kwanim Chain Mohyu. So Kwanim, they were valid Kwanim. Wait. Shinem of Ayaslim, Nitzosam, Kwani Bomos. They took of them and they were quantum to bring the sacrifice. So Amr Abachon Amr Biyochanan, Min Abachirim Shabom, from the Bachirim Shabom, El Nema Osrum. So meaning, so why did they prohibit their progeny? Listen, the Neisha in the Abnis Harusos, they held like this. They would say Yibun, a person, a woman falls to Yibun, let's say she's an Arusa. Meaning the husband never consummated the marriage. He never went to chupa. The kusim, the kusim, you know, they rejected Torah about that. They were similar to the, like the stukim and the baitusim. Interesting. You think the originators of this position that we only accept the written law, not the oral law, was, was the, was the Torah and baitus? No. The kusim, th that was their position originally. They rejected the oral interpretation and they interpreted the Torah literally. It says, we'll see a they interpret it this way. The deceased, the widow of the deceased, who never entered into the marriage fully, she's not permitted to marry the Zor. Yeah, the way they, they interpreted mm -hmm. it. But what about if she was fully married? She's permitted. Yibam has no relevance to her. But in reality, she's, she's also, she's Yibam Lashuk. There's the same love. The same love. So, contrary to Yibam. The only, they only performed Yibam with who? Only with what? Because with the Arusa. But the woman who was in the Sua, they would let her remarry. But according to the Rebbe Kiva, what, what, what happens if she remarries? It's a Mamzer. Of course, Rebbe Kiva is of the opinion that Chaivi Lavim is a Mamzer. That's what we're saying. Osrum Miyamis Arusos, Upochimis and and they would absolve the Nesuos of, of Yibam and Chalitza. My Dorshu. How did they interpret the Pasuk? The woman who's outside the marriage, meaning she's only partially married, she's not permitted to marry the stranger, the third party. But the woman who's not sitting outside the marriage, she already entered into the marriage, she's permitted to the Zor. Reb Kiva Latame, and Reb Kiva is consistent with his position. The Omar, Yesh Mamz and Chavi Lavim. So, according to Rabbi Kiva, among the Kusim, what do you have? They're originally Jews, but what happens? But the women, because of the Yavomos who were fully married, they're all Mamzerim. So, they have intermingled among them Mamzerim. So, so, you have legitimate Jews marrying Mamzerim. No, we don't know who's who. We don't know who's, but that's the reason why you may have among the Kusim, one may be a legitimate Jew marrying a, mm -hmm. a Mamzer. Mm -hmm. Whatever it is, but it's enough. It's good. I mean, you say you go at the rope. It's not so real. It's not real. Yish Omrim. Others say, Others say the reason why they banned the the, uh, the Kusim 
because they're not meticulous and they're not proficient in the details of the mitzvahs. Meaning, they don't know the laws of Kedusha and Nesuin. The person writes a get and the get is not written properly. It's not a valid get. And if the woman is not married, the marriage, the person didn't evaluate all the, take everything in consideration. Marriage is also not a valid marriage. We'll see. The Gemara discusses it. No, no. Question is, what's the, what's the Doraisa? What's the, if, they, if, they, if they get it right, if they get it right, they're very meticulous. The Gemara is going to quote the Gemara we had in Chulim. The Gemara says, Yeshomrim. Who is this Yeshomrim? Omer of Ibi, Bar Ovin, Rebeleze. Rebeleze, the Tanyo. Matzah's Kusi. Matzah that's made by a Kusi. No, Kusi Bakery. Okay? Muteres. It's, you're permitted to eat this matzah on Pesach. Not only that, V'odam yotzi bo yidei chobosu b'Pesach. It's made lishmo, meaning they watched it for the sake of the mitzvah and so on and so forth. Not only because Tosas quotes the Gemara in Sochim, if a non-Jew make bakes matzah and it's watched, that it's not chomets. It, it, you're permitted to eat it, but you're not yotzi uh, in the mitzvah matzah. It's made to eat matzah's mitzvah. But the kusim, because they are Jewish, Although they're not meticulous in many things, but what they are meticulous in, they're exceptionally meticulous in. Whatever they, they do right, they do to the ultimate level. So therefore, if they bake matzah, not only are you not eating chomets, you eat, one even fills his obligation of achilles matzah to be continued.